Okay, welcome back, everyone. This is week one, day one of programming basics of your journey on the coding dojo. We are on the afternoon lecture. I am going to introduce some topics to us today, as we see here on our calendar, variables, data types, algo app introduction. So we're going to go over what these mean. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to our learn platform and highlight these topics. I'm not going to read it for you word for word, uh, but I'm going to try and explain it in my own words so that we get a good grasp of what we're being taught here. So let's go ahead and start today's lecture and we'll go over what we need to cover at the end of the day. Variables. Um, so who can tell me what a, in your own words, uh, what's a variable? What is a variable? Anything you want it to be. Well, that is a very broad definition. <laughs> Anything you want it to be, you can't, well, yes, technically, but in what sense? It's any data type. Okay, there we go. We're getting specific. It's a type of data. And okay, we said it's anything you want it to be. So it's a type of data that you can change, right? So that's more along the lines of what we're looking for. Let's let's take out our 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 blackboard here and I'll do some drawing and we'll try to define what a variable is. So that's our first topic of the day. What is a variable? Can you guys see my screen all right? So um, a variable. Can I can't see screen? your screen. Yeah, oh, here we are. Let me, thank you. All right, here we are. What is a variable? A variable is a container. It's a container for data, okay? Like, like in math, right? Do we know what a variable was? Do we still remember what it was in math? You can, it can change based on, you know, uh, conditions. So a variable is something that we're gonna use it is going to be a container. So for example, what I mean by container is, uh, I'm here, draw. I have poor drawing skills, but bear with me. I'm going to draw a box. Okay. And this box represents the box that you pick up when you go to your friend's apartment to help them move. And it has the stuff in it that um, he wants to keep when you're helping him move, okay? The label can change. You can change the label on the box. You can change the contents in the box. There's so many things that you can change about this box. But what we want you to understand is that a variable is like a box. It's a container where you can change the values inside uh, based on the name you give it, okay? so. How do we create a variable? Right now, there's, there's multiple ways to create a variable. Right now, what we want you to learn is to create a variable. You write this, var, it's a keyword var, and then you name the variable. So the name of the variable, uh, so for example, um, this box I just called stuff, right? So we can call this variable stuff. And we want something to go inside the box. So what do we put inside this stuff box? Uh, let's say we put um, blankets, right? Uh, your friend's got to have some miscellaneous items. He's putting inside the stuff box, we put blankets. So the equivalent would be to write an equal sign, one equal sign, is going to assign what goes inside the box. One single equal sign. And keep that in mind because you might see double equal signs or triple equal signs in the future. Right now, one equal sign is going to put 
that thing inside the box. So right now we are going to put something in there. We're going to put something on the right hand side of the equal sign. And I'm going to put it in quotes. We'll explain what this means in a minute, but I'm going to say blankets, right? Blankets. And so right now in JavaScript, because that's the language that we're learning in JavaScript, we have made this box. The stuff box, that's the name of this box, and it has blankets inside. Here we are with the same result. This equal sign here, okay, not a triple equal sign, but not to be confused here. This equal sign, let's draw an arrow to it, is basically the same as this arrow here that's giving this value. This arrow is saying the blankets go inside, right? So this one equal sign is saying blankets go inside this stuff variable. Okay. So um, let me take a poll here so that we can give some feedback on how well we're understanding the concepts that we're that we're learning. Okay. So give a, a rating one through 10 and it has a, a bit of description as to what I, you know, what's a one through 10. Give me some feedback as to how well we're understanding this concept. Again, we're starting from the very beginning. So if this seems like, you know, very simple stuff, it's boring, you too easy. That's the way it's meant to be until it gets hard. So I want to know how well are we understanding this concept? Got to cover our ground and make sure that at least this is understood before we move on. Cool. So it looks like most of us feel pretty confident. Um, what we are doing right now is covering the concept of what a variable is. A variable is a container. It contains data. Okay. We're going to go over what types of data this uh, container can cover. But right now we establish that one, the first thing, um, the first thing we established is that to create a variable, we have to have this keyword var. This is the keyword here. This establishes that we're creating the variable. Can't create a variable without this keyword. Okay, var is short for variable. Then we have the name. Okay, then we have the equal sign. This, so this name is what the label on the box is. Uh, we have this equal sign. So this is the third thing. This is uh, assignment. We're assigning what goes inside this name variable. And then lastly, the value, right? This is the value the data of what is going inside uh, that stuff variable. Okay, so um, I think we all understood that. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the next topic because we're gonna have to introduce what goes inside the variable. Right now, I've just put this word blankets in quotations, what does this exactly mean? What's this blankets in quotations? So we're going to have to establish different types of values that we can put in this uh, name box, okay? So let's do that. Um, we have different data types. So in, in, in programming um, or in anything, let's, let's use the analogy of a restaurant, okay? When we can think of food as data, right? It has a value, a nutritional value to it. It has contents in it that make sense to our body. Our body digests that data and uses it 
you know, the nutrients in it to assign to what we can use for our body, what we can excrete, what we don't need anymore. Okay. So that's data. When we're going to a restaurant, we're looking for data presented in a certain way. We want that plate that we're looking for. So what we're doing here right now is that part of the restaurant where we're creating data. Okay. We're creating it. If you have a restaurant, if you have a, 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 a kitchen, a, you know, table, dining area, a refrigerator, in order to make any of that work, you need food. Okay. And that food is the data right now. What we're doing is creating containers where we can create that data, that stuff, that content that we're working with in order to make everything work. Okay. This is like the, the, the blood of the system that goes around and, and goes between the front end and the back end and the database. This is all data that we can manipulate. So we're right now just creating containers that store that data. Okay. So that's what we're doing right now. The next topic that we're going to go over, as we see in the calendar, is data types. So what are the types of data that we can access in our digital restaurant? Okay. Uh, we're going to access different data types, and I'm going to ask you guys if you guys are already familiar with them. So let's go over different data types. So now we're on the second part, second topic of today's lecture, data types. So we established the first thing, what are variables? Variables are containers. They hold data. Now we're going to go over what are different data types. So who can tell me? A, uh, a data type, if you understand what I'm asking. What's a type Boolean. of data? A Boolean. Okay, so that's that's one. All right. String. String. We have yeah. Boolean strings. Variable. I think I misspelled. I, put, I got too excited there. I added extra S. I can't erase it. Um, someone said something else. Sorry. A number. Integer. Number. Yes. Number, right. class integer. And this, these are called different things in different pro programming languages. But right now uh, in JavaScript, we have a specific way we're going to call it. And it's a, it should be integer, right? No, number. Excuse me. All right. So it's number. Um, so we have numbers. We have strings. We have Booleans. These are different types of data. Okay, so let's go back to our Blackboard. So the first type that we said was Boolean. And actually this one, as simple as it is, let's leave it for the very end uh, because it's so simple, it might seem complex at first. Okay, so let's, let's start with string. String. A string can be from one letter to a paragraph, to a page, to a book, to a, from a sentence, to a word, anything that's in quotations is a string, okay? This letter A inside quotations is a string. This, um, you know, uh, what do I say? Super long text message I leave to an old friend uh, that says, blah, 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 how have you been? and it goes on for you know 2 hours everything in that that contains that in in the quotations is a string okay um even a number if a number is inside the quotations that number is considered now a string okay a string can have spaces in it as well so you can say hello world that space in between hello and world, that, that's a value as well, okay? I don't want to put an underscore because an underscore is itself something, but that space here, there's a value there in the string. So any empty space is a value in the string as well. Okay, so that's our first data type that we've established. A string is any series of characters um, uh, within quotations. Okay. Can we understand that? Let's, let's, let's do a, a pulse check for everything. 
let's do these quick pulse checks just so that no one gets left behind and that I feel we are uh, moving forward together as a class. Okay, how well do we understand that the first data type is a string and that a string is anything within those quotations? Okay. Good, I think you guys are getting it. The next thing we're gonna go over is number, all right? Number. Wow, that was a lowercase and uppercase B at the same time. We're just gonna leave it. A number is anything that is a number, right? Zero, one, two, 108, okay? These are all numbers. So if you make a variable var, num equals five, okay? A variable that looks like this. Oh, my pen's not writing. Great. Well, uh, can I make this another number? Is this like so stubborn it's not gonna draw at all? Let's restart this thing. Oh, no, it's broken. Okay, I can type it out. And that's the beauty of Zoom. Oh, but I can't escape. Oh, here we are. Whew. Escape that. Okay, so let's write with Zoom annotation tools. Var num equals four. Okay, the data type inside this variable called num that I've created here in this red text below, okay, this data type is a number because it's a plain number with no quotations around it, nothing, nothing encapsulating it that's signaling that it's anything else, plain number by itself. That's a number data type. And we have to differentiate between different data types so that we know what we're dealing with when we're processing that data, okay? D data that's a string is processed differently than data that's a number. For example, um, let me try this Blackboard one more time. I really like it, but sometimes it just, it just like fails on me and doesn't tell me why for no reason. So if I get to that point, excuse me, guys. Um, all right, here we are. Um, here we are, it's working. Var x equals five, all right? So we have established our variable x equals five. And let's say var y equals a string of the number five. What's gonna happen if I add X plus Y? Okay, type your answer in the chat. What's gonna happen? What's the result of adding X plus Y? Actually don't have access to the chat somewhere on my screen, it's disappeared. Um, undefined. Vincent, can you tell me what you're seeing in the chat? Undefined is not the answer. Good guess. Yeah, we got a 55 error. We got five. We got five comma five type error, undefined error. Okay. Okay. All good guesses. I like your guys's uh, thinking outside the box. Maybe two different variable types can't be added together, but in this case what the result would be is 55. Why is that? The reason is, is because we're adding two different data types. 
we're adding two different data types. This is a number and this is a string. And if we're adding two different uh, types of data, it's going to say, OK, you want me to add five to the end of this string of five. So what it does is it concatenates it together and it creates uh, essentially a new string where the number, the value is 55. OK, it doesn't treat it as a math problem where you would expect the answer to be 10. And so when we're working with different data types, we have to understand that the way they interact each, with each other depends on what type of data they are, okay? Um, so it depends on the programming language on what would the result be, right? Uh, and Vincent, if I'm, if I have you know, blunder and make an error on what a rule should be, feel free to just interrupt me and correct me. But what would happen in JavaScript is it would uh, be 55. Um, so would the result be string 55? Yes, Aaron, that is the answer. Okay, so we're working with different data types and depending on what type of data it is in the language is how it's gonna behave. Uh, so we have to be specific when we're doing something like X plus Y when they're both five, we have to see, are they both numbers? If they're both numbers, then we can expect X plus Y to be 10. If not, then we would, it, it depends on what you're adding. So if you string with a number, it will become a string. A number with a number remains a number in JavaScript. Okay, so that's the rule here. Uh, but it may differ on the language that you're learning. And JavaScript is the, the language of the web. Uh, we haven't gone into officially what it is yet, but um, that is the language of the web. It's JavaScript. Uh, so we, we have to know how it works, what takes priority, in this case, string. Okay, so be careful when, when we're adding different types of data together. We're having them interact. We have to know what the result's gonna be if two different data types interact together. Okay, so let's do a quick pulse check on that. Do we understand what a number is and why it's important that we are specific with what type of data it is for the reason of um, making, you know, let's say functions that we want addition to happen. Uh, if you try to add a string to a number, it's not gonna give you the result that you're asking for. Okay, so we have data. It's the value that we use when we are, we are writing uh, programs. A program is a system, it's a machine, right? So the, the stuff that the machine is working with, the fuel that makes it you know, grind is that data. Okay, so the data is here is, is what we're learning. The next type of data that we mentioned um, was a Boolean data, okay? So Boolean data, here is the next data type. And what a uh, Boolean is, and I think someone already said it, if someone wants to just say it off the top of their head, what, what's a Boolean? True it's just false. a true or false. Yeah. True or false, exactly. It's an on or off switch uh, when you walk in the room in your house, right? When you walk in, Let's assume you leave your lights off when you leave because that's safe to do in your neighborhood, All right? So you walk in your house, your, your lights are off, the light switch is off, right? If you want it to go on, you flick it on, right? That's the same as a, a, a Boolean value. A true or false. On or off. Yes or no, zero or one, okay? True or false, okay? We're giving just analogies and understand, understanding true or false. So true or false is how you should understand a Boolean. Okay, so we have strings, everything within quotations. We have numbers, anything that's a number, not a quotation that doesn't have quotations. We have those two uh, data types. And we have Booleans, which are true or false. 
Okay, so next type of data. Someone said undefined to an answer to what I said, what X, Y would be. Can anyone tell me what undefined means? What is what is undefined? Is it when a value hasn't been given? Okay. It, it, it has, it's a box, right? It's a container with nothing in it, right? And so that's, that's one way to see undefined. What about the, what about null? Who can tell me what null is? Null is a value of zero, isn't it? It's different from undefined. So there's right. no value at all. No, no is is no value at all. No, no, nothing has been explicitly assigned to that value. Okay, I um, give this this analogy. It's a weird one, but it sticks with me at least. And if it sticks with me, I, I'm pretty sure it will stick with you. So here's the analogy. Um, I lived in a share house in college. And every so often they would have uh, like a party and some guy would show up and he would wear a trench coat and a golf cap. And when you asked him what his name was, he would say, he would say, I have no name. So we called him no name. Okay. So he would not answer the question or at least his answer to the question, what is your name was, I have no name. So he was fine with being called no name. That would be like null. He's giving an answer that's a non-answer, okay? Undefined would be like if I asked him the question and he didn't answer at all, okay? That would be more like undefined. I'm asking, there is nothing there. I'm getting no callback, no response. That's more like undefined, okay? So it's a weird analogy, but maybe it'll stick with you. Okay. And the last thing we see here are comments. We're going to uh, divulge into what comments are in, a, in its own lecture, their own benefits, how to create them, how they vary. Okay, but when you see a double slash or some kind of, at least on Visual Studio Code, when you see some code here that's gray, um, it means it's commented out. It means it's it's there, but the machine is not going to read it. Only us, the developers, are able to see that code. So it's it's hidden to the, the code interpreter of where you're running the code. Okay, so it's commented out. It's notes uh, for the developer, for either for yourself or for other developers to help explain what you're doing in that moment or uh, what you would expect the value to be. In this case, and this next to this console log, we have a comment that says, my name is Jeff, because we expect that console.log, my string variable inside here, would print this quotation. Okay, and by the way, we haven't introduced what console log is, okay? I'll explain that in a second, but let's, let's give some feedback on how well we're understanding the difference between null, undefined, and what comments are, what they're, what they're for. That they're just hidden code for us developers only to see. Let's give a quick feedback and then we'll move on uh, to understanding what that console log thing is, what that means. And then we're gonna start running some code after that. So let's do this pulse check while I have a swig of water. Cool. All right. So let's continue. I think we have a pretty good understanding so far. And let's move along. All right. Console.log. All right. So in order to explain this, let me do a bit of drawing. Okay. So here's our, here's our browser screen, okay? Um, and some of these, these things that I'm drawing, you may not see in practice yet, but in order to explain what a console is, at least I wanna give a bit of context here. 
So here's your code. Okay, you have your code written, blah, blah, blah. And then you have a console. And I'll make this its own rectangle. These don't matter on what size the rectangles are. It can be any size. You can resize a browser window, right? So three boxes, what each one does. Okay, so the code, when you write code, like let's say you're writing code for a website to make a you know website to help sell your neighbor's um, litter of puppies, right? So you're making a website, you're writing the code, you wanna see the view of your code, its effect in action. You wanna see that website you're creating, you're gonna see that in your browser. You're gonna see that in the squares of your browser. Let's say this is your website. You have a paragraph here, you have some icons. It looks like a face, right? But okay, it's it's not. It's it's your website. Uh, I'll write that here. Website. Okay. Um, so your code is going to make the website appear, but as you're building your website, you're going to want to test to see if certain things are connecting, to see behind the scenes, underneath the hood, as it were, of a vehicle, like. You want to see if everything is working as as uh, it should. You want to run some tests on your code. So you write some things on your code that would appear only to your console. Okay. And so this console area is a special screen area just for our just for us developers. It's not for the user uh, to use, but just for us developers. So when you see for example, where it says console log, what it's saying is print to this special screen area just for us developers. So it's saying just print this to an area. It's like when you, you know, you go buy something at the grocery store, they print a receipt. Okay. It's just like that. Okay. When you print something to the console, you're printing something to a receipt paper in that in that moment that shows you what the value of everything is that you would have calculated or purchased or whatever it is that you're running, whatever the code does, okay? You can make it different sentences appear to the console. You can test to see if a value is as you would have expected it to be in the console. We can print to this console. So just think like your little cashier box next to you that prints receipts. That's our console. It's our special screen area, somewhere we can see our code printed or an action that the browser wouldn't see, not something for like the user to see, just for us developers to see. So our special screen area. Okay, so that's what we, we're asking here. We have created a variable. Variable, we, we know by that keyword var. And we have the name of the box. It's called my string variable. Okay, what's inside this box? It's a string. And the string says, my name is Jeff. Okay. So we have a box with something in it. What this line here says, console.log, and then open parentheses, and then that string name in it, what it's doing is saying, oh, it's basically saying, open the box and tell me what's in it and print it to that special screen area, okay? Print it to that special screen area, that sentence that you see there that says, my name is Jeff. So print this somewhere that I can see it. Okay, so this is unpacking the box, checking it, printing it so that us, the developers, can see. So the result would be, my name is Jeff. So that brings us to our next topic. We're going to start running code, and we're going to start uh, building code so that we can see and testing what we're building so that we know that we're writing it correctly. Okay? so. Um, that is the next topic of uh, today. It is the Algo app. All right, so we've covered variables. We've covered different data types. We've covered the Algo app, and well, we're going to cover that now. Uh, but so let's let's give some feedback before we move on to the Algo app on how well we're understanding the concept of the console. And when we're saying console log, we're just saying print whatever is in the print whatever this value is within that parentheses to a special screen area just for us developers.
Yeah, in different languages, it has its own syntax, the way it's written. So here, it's console.log. As you guys um, go through the program and learn different languages, you'll notice there's a difference. And you just have to know a slight difference in verbiage like you would between Italian and Spanish, right? Something's it's a slight difference, but you can memorize that. So right now, it's just console.log and parentheses, whatever you want in the parentheses. One more thing to note, okay, about console log. So we see here, let me just go back to our, our screen. Uh, if I say um, var x equals hello, And I want to print this uh, value hello. I want this to be printed to my console, this hello. So what I'll have to do is say console dot log, open the parentheses, close the parentheses. The value I want printed is going to go in here. So this is the magic word to print console dot log. And then in here, we write the value, x, right? x is the value that we write in order to make it to work. If we were to put x into quotes like that, it would no longer work. It would just, it would just print x itself. That is going to print the letter X itself. It now is looking at a string that is irrelevant to the name of the variable. In order to see the content inside that variable X that says hello, we have to print, we have to put inside the parentheses a plain X without any quotations around it. So it knows exactly what it's looking for. Okay, so this will print here. That would print just X. So in order to make it print hello, you have to delete these quotations there. Okay, now let's move on to the trace app. So we can see that, so, so in the platform, you'll have random sections here that are imported. This is the trace app, we're looking at it here. Uh, but we can go to the website itself and play with this tool on its own in its own link on a tab somewhere. So let's go over how it works here and then we'll go to that link tab to see the difference there. Okay, so here we have, the first thing we see is a bunch of buttons up here. Okay, ignore this for now. Let's go straight to this code where it says one through five. Line one and line five go together. This is the opening and this is the closing of it. The opposite end of the bracket, the curly bracket, that's what it's called, a curly bracket. Those opposite ends, everything inside is what it, it contains. For now, I'm not going to explain what export function main parentheses is. Okay, I know it's frustrating to have something that doesn't make sense sitting in front of you, but Right now, it's not worth explaining. What I want to explain is that everything that goes inside it, everything that is within these curly brackets, between now I've changed the, I've expanded it a little bit, but between line one and eight, okay, between line one and eight, that's where our code is. So that's where I'm going I'm to ask you guys this week specifically. We're going to emphasize using trace. After this, we're going to take off the training wheels and use something else. But for this week, when we run our code, we just have to make sure that we're putting it inside export function main, the opening curly bracket and the closing one. So everything inside is what we're going to have our code, um, what we want to run, what we're going to do. So let's read what we have. Okay, let's, let's make some separation here so it's not so cluttered. We have the first thing that we see is line three. So we can recognize what this is, right? Because it says var, this is a variable. So this is a container and 
it's saying it equals five. So the value in this container is a number and it's the number five and it's assigned to this container that says my num. The next line here, it says var my other num equals 10. So now we have another box. Its content is 10. And when we console log those two together, we say in this console log, we can, we can do addition and different uh, math things inside the parentheses. So we can not only just print variables, but we can print the uh, value of what those variables would be, in this case, added together. So right now we have my num plus my other num. Their values are 5 and 10. So we, who can tell me what you think this would be? Easy, right? 15, yeah. 15, so, yeah. Because they're both numbers. They're not, one's not a number, one's not a string. They're both numbers. It's going to be a simple math problem. And so we want to see the computer do this math problem. So what we're going to do is if everything looks like as is, where it's within export function main, the opening and closing brackets of that thing, if everything in there has a proper syntax, that means um, nothing is, and by the way, when I say proper syntax, these semicolons that you see after each line, that's what I mean. Uh, it doesn't have to be there, but it's proper JavaScript. It used to be required, so it is technically still required. Always each line have a semicolon before the next line. Okay, so semicolon before the next line. is As long as everything looks fine, there's, no, no, there's nothing broken. Uh, like, let's say, for example, if this were a string and you have an opening quotation, but you don't have a closing one, that would make this whole thing break. As long as no nothing is like that, where... For example, like if we close this and you see how there's a red squiggly, that would make the code break. As long as nothing is broken like that, okay? Every beginning has an ending. Every opening parentheses has a closing one. There's the semicolons. Everything's in order. The code's going to run. So let's run the code and see what it does. All right? So I'm going to actually describe what it does before it runs. And then let, let's see how let's if it if it runs the way I described. Okay, so it's going to run from top to bottom. Okay, it's going to save each value in its own table. And it's going to memorize those values as it goes along. And then it's going to do that final command where it's going to console log uh, that here, that what we're asking it to, my num plus my other num. So it's going to save the values as such for... Uh, and for reference, this is what's called T diagramming, okay? This is what we're essentially doing in the Algo app. And I'll go over that in detail after we see this run and trace, okay? This is what's called a T diagram. And a T diagram holds a variable on the left and the value on the right. So as we read this code, let's pretend that we're the machine about to run this code. We're gonna run this and, and, and build our own T diagram that holds the values. We're gonna expect the computer to do this as well. So when we run the code, we should expect it to print the result that we're gonna go over right now in this T diagram. So we're gonna read this code from top to bottom. The first thing we're gonna read is line three. Remember, we're ignoring the beginning and closing here. Line three var my num equals five. So we see the variable, its name is my num. So we're gonna put that on the left-hand side. We're gonna put that on the left-hand side where it says variable. We're gonna say my num. That's the name of the variable and its value right now, at this point in time, it's five. So its value is five. So we, we write on the right-hand side of this T, five. Okay, so we've finished this line of code. We're gonna go ahead and go on to the next line. We're okay, nothing on four, we go to five. Okay, five says var my other num equals 10. So we're gonna write that out on the left-hand side. I know this seems tedious at first, but as, as long as we can do this 
in this slow order, okay, and keep our focus as we keep uh, uh, our variable and values, we, we should be able to solve any code. As long as we go through it slowly, processing our variable and values together, even the most difficult problems are going to seem easy. As long as we figure out where our focus is on our reading. Uh, it's like when you were reading a book and sometimes you're reading a paragraph and you read the same line again by accident because your eyes are getting, you know, tired reading the stuff or you skip a line when you're reading a paragraph. What we're doing here is making sure that we're reading line by line and interpreting each line of code exactly as it should be so that we're building proper code that the computer should execute the way we'd expect. Okay, so right now, We've keeping our values at, at variables and values. My num is five. My other num is 10. So we have my, my num is five here. My other num is 10. And then we have a console log. Okay. You can either write console log on your T diagram or you can create its own section area. I like to do it like this. I like to create a box and I call this my, you know, console. So in this console box, you can write here the value of what the console log is going to be. So right now it's my num plus my other num. We already established that's going to be 15. So that's what prints in our special screen area just for us developers, this console right here. Okay. So this is the console. So we should expect the computer to do something like this. When we run the code, it's going to read each line, interpret what it says, save those variables and values to its own memory that looks something like this T diagram. And then it's going to do what we tell it to do on line seven, which is to print something. So print to the area, these two values, if they would be added together. Okay, so right, it would be 15. So it prints to our special screen area 15. Let's go ahead and run our code to make sure it does this. And we'll go ahead and click the run button. takes a second um, to load, and that's the annoying part. But it'll load as long as everything is written correctly. And if it gets frozen after too long, then refresh your page. So there it goes. It just ran. It just ran through the whole thing, went through all four steps. Let's go from the beginning and run it step by step. So this play button, if I can, I can stop and start this like I would a video. Um, so let's go from top to bottom here. Var my num equals five, let's play it. As soon as it finishes reading that line, it's gonna save you hear it here on this tab here, we can see the variables. My num just got saved to five. My other num, it's in the process of interpreting what's the value here. So right now it's undefined as it reads over. As soon as it finishes reading this line goes to six, it's going to give that value of 10. There it is, 10. Now it's on line seven. The command is to print to the console what these would be together. As soon as it finishes doing that, here's our console. It says terminal, but it's our console. It's another word for it. And here it is, 15. So 15 just got printed to our console. We have it here now. So it did what we expected it to do. Okay. Um, let's just get a pulse check to see how we're feeling about that whole thing that we just did. Um, running the trace app, where to put the code, how to make sure it's cleanly written, and how to press the run button and see that it's executed correctly. Cool. All right, like what I'm seeing. All right, so that leads us to our next subject, which is not on our calendar, but we're gonna do it anyway, because it's on our to-do for today. So 
after this lecture, which ends in a few minutes, we are going to go to our open lab. So we're going to work on our assignments here. The, fir the first uh, VS Code assignment, the Code Challenge Create Variables, and the Algo App Level 1. So let's go ahead and check out the Algo App. Because the Algo App is a series of... Oh, where'd it go? Here it is. All right, here we are. It's a series of activities that you see here that have code. And this area here, this T di where it says T diagram, this is essentially the same thing that I just did when I made that um, red uh, that red cross. So essentially it would be right here. So this is our T. variables and values. So as we find new variables and values, we write them here, okay? So if our x equals five, so we write on the left here, x value five, and we have a command, console log. So our console is this area here below. So whatever it tells us to console, we're we're putting that value here uh, where it says your answer. So it says X, right now it's five. So if we enter here five and click submit, it'll tell me I got it right. If I got it wrong after so many attempts, there'll be a timer that you can watch a video that'll explain uh, how to read this, how to print this, how to put the right value in that the computer would uh put on this console so again this bottom area here this represents the console so anything that you see console log you put that in here okay for your own reference you can make a something like this on the t diagram to keep track of what should be in the console maybe there's multiple console logs in the thing that you're reading okay and you don't know what it, the final result is going to be so you can make console just something on the t diagram here you just put the five here, the value. Okay, that's how that works. So for today, what you want to do is get through this level, get through activity one through five. When you get to five, take a screenshot of the whole page or yeah, the whole page that shows that you've completed this activity because it'll show like a completed symbol here. Uh, it'll say five out of five on this level one thing. So that's your assignment. Submit that screenshot where it asks you to where it asks you to upload the files for that assignment. And that's the core assignment for today. What does the other thing do today? The other thing we ask you to com uh, to do today is. Uh, this one is this is due tomorrow but you see it on the schedule here. No, it says due today. I think I need to, I need to, I need to change that. So create variables is also a key assignment. So don't skip this one. Create variables. So you're creating variables just the way I created it on that black screen today. Use var, name that, that variable with a name. You name it anything you'd like. Make it relevant to what you're going to put inside that box, obviously. So you it's, so it's your data is organized. Um, so create variables. In this case, variables could be height and age of somebody trying to enter a ride. So for this assignment, it's asking it's going to build upon the variables you're creating here on future assignments. So you you want to understand. This is going to be like a, a theme here. For, for example, you are made to make a some sort of program machine that's going to uh, spit out a result for the children in line waiting to be measured to see if they are the right height and age. Okay, If they are the right height and age, they may enter. Or let's say they're not the right age, but they meet the height requirement, then they may enter. So there's different conditions that we can make to make it possible to enter that ride. And if someone is eligible, we're gonna write something in the future saying, okay, you can enter. 
or not. So that's some functionality that I'll just hint at right now. It's not something we're doing right now. We're just creating variables that would contain numbers that hold values of age and height. Okay. So, uh, you know, don't, it, it's so simple that it may seem complicated, but it's not. Just create some containers that hold age and height. Um, and that's, that's what you have for today. All right. So for this next hour, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be breaking out into our rooms, depending on what we have. Obviously, you can work on ahead and, uh, you know, ask me questions if you have some question on something you're working on ahead. But for today, um, you know, we've learned about variables, data types, how to run code, how to test our code and trace. Uh, we've learned how to open Visual Studio code. So we're getting our feet established um, because it's going to start getting uh, going uphill pretty soon. Okay, so we have to just make sure we understand our basics, our ABCs, what are variables, what are the data types that we can use? Um, how do uh, we, what's the console and what's its benefit? How do we print to the console? Okay, how do we write proper code? So for every opening parentheses, we have a closing. Okay, so we know we use parentheses when we use console log. So for now, we know we have that. Okay, in the future, we'll be explaining what functions are, uh, what tools that we use in functions to interpret data, okay? So that's like um, every, every program that you've ever dealt with uh, on your computer is a combination of two different types of uh code that it would run. It would be like an, a re reading a list or checking if something is true or false, okay? And that's why we have Boolean values that are true or false. We're gonna check if things are true or false. We're gonna check those values. So we'll I'll get into what that means later when we start to give examples of how to write code that interprets values. But for now, we just have to write our values, define their meaning, write some proper syntax code, and then we'll start to write some functionality. We'll make the machine do something with those values, okay? And if you're already ahead, then you're probably already doing that. Okay, so thank you guys for attending this afternoon lecture. It, we're gonna go ahead and close it out now. Um, did I record? Yes, I did. Awesome. I'm so glad. I had a doubt for a second, I panicked. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, cool.